Hey Leo Seekers, so I've been feeling your might. Um, you know, all signs have their light and shadow aspects and the range of their expression in the world, expression of their archetype. Sometimes it can be, you know, very modern and social media and, and in the spotlight and, and charismatic and popular and all that really wonderful stuff. And sometimes there's another layer to it. The brave heart, the uh, king of the jungle, the leader, the one that somehow has enough love and light to contain literally everyone. And that was really lovely to tap into because every time I, I'm sensing that a collective of a sign is at its, you know, broad potential, high potential, you might want to call it. It, it gives me a sense of ease, you know, like we're closer to being okay if not already. Thank you for being mighty, you. I'm working with the uh, Mythic Tarot today. And we are going to look into this coming month of November. The world, here you are. This is your might. This is the last card in the deck out of 78 cards. And it represents the completion of the entire full journey of the fool. The fool goes through every single one of the cards in this journey of this human condition represented by the 78 cards. And behind every card, there is the fool. Um, if you really want to know more about tarot in depth and not just in a surface level from wherever you can uh, bite from, um, check out my Tarot Masterclass. It's, it's for unlimited streaming on Patreon. But here the world card is coming out as you. After having gone through a very meaningful passage, journey, process, initiation. Oh. So, in a way, you're home. When I say home, I mean, I mean your inner home, you're, you're, you're in yourself six months. And that makes you want to, ironically, take a break from the physical. Maybe there's a journey, a vacation, travel. It seems far away. There seems to be an ocean there, too many tides. King of Wands, but you're definitely in the lead of it. This is not something that forces you or um, what's the word? Strong arms you. It's not. It's led by you. You have the hair fun. You have the experience. You have the wisdom. You have the knowledge. You know what you're doing. You know what the aim. But some of you are picking up on a message that needs to be delivered. A really important message. The messenger to the king. It's like Merlin advising King Arthur. And every time I see the Six of Swords, I do think of Avalon. Um, and the little boat you need to go on and swim with it into the mist so perhaps the island unveils itself to you or not here the island does unveil itself and it's like it's moving straight into this world card so there is like a passage between the veil you know like the veil is lifted the, the mist is cleared 
and you can see to the other side. Now, November is considered a time where the veil is very thin, thin and we can, you know, dance with the spirits. And the boundaries between the dimensions open. There is something that you've been ready for. You've been ready for this. Oh, the emperor. You've been ready for this. You've been preparing for this. You've been... It's almost like I'm picking up on a life mission. It's almost it's something that you've been on a mission with now. I think, I don't, I don't know if it's like just a job. If it is a career path and it's something that you deeply resonate with and, and believe in, and it's, uh, it's something that you have this missionary approach to. And I do see a gathering of really powerful people and leaders in the same field or, or or maybe they come from seemingly different fields but they meet in this place to congregate, to make decisions. And now we have the hermit. Paraphon, Emperor, and the Hermit after the King of Wands. This is, these are major um, patriarchal archetypes of sky gods. And then there's the Two of Swords. And it's almost like you can't believe it. It's almost like your inner child is like, how did I get here? Because your, your journey so far, your process, has been very challenging and painful emotionally, um, psychologically. And it was very mundane. It was like relationship issues, family quarrels, just life's challenges that felt so oppressive and abrasive to your psyche. And it, it, you can... Okay, so you've been feeling like you're in survival mode and you're only dealing with the mundane, but in reality... It was all a part of the spiritual initiation because the mundane is not separate from the divine. It is the platform to the divine. It's, it's the congested manifestation to the spread out divine, okay? Matter equals energy, it equals MC square. Energy equals mass times the speed of, times the speed of light times the speed of light. So. Everything you've been doing, if it seemed simplistic, mundane, daily, um, soap opera stuff, inner relationship dramas, work, money, food, health, and if you thought for a moment that that was taking you away from your mission or from your spiritual growth, it was the complete opposite. It was taking you deeper and deeper and further and further into it. The only way out is in. The deeper you went, the higher you climbed. And psychologically, it's a little bit hard for you to acknowledge because it requires you to not acknowledge the level of power, leadership, wisdom, Bending of time, all that skill, that knowledge will require you to acknowledge that you've attained these things and something about you, even though you are a Leo and it's natural for you to shine, you're like, I can't shine that bright. It's, is, it, is it vain? Is it megalomaniac? Is it a little bit over the top? And that in, enormous might that you're, that you're finding yourself within, it, it, it humbles you. Bottom of the deck, we have the Wheel of Fortune, the Moirais, goddesses of fate. Something will require your wisdom and patience this month. Um, 
being the person who knows when to speak and when not to speak. Nine of Swords, if you recognize a situation where you're better off not saying anything, don't say it. If you recognize a lost battle or a lost cause, let it go. It's your ego that wouldn't give up on anyone. Not your heart. Your heart lets people go through their karma and their journey and, you, and doesn't deprive them of that in the name of being the hero. It's at times feeling lonely concerning there's something that is unknown, an answer you're waiting on that doesn't depend on you. And it's a rep, rep, replication. It's a copy paste, it's a redo of a sentiment that you had growing up. You felt powerless, there's nothing you can do, and all you had to do, all you could do was wait for others to do what they want or should do, and you were completely reliant or reliable on them, relying on them, and didn't do well, it wasn't good because they weren't stepping up to the, stepping up to the game. And it, it embedded that sense of waiting for someone else to do the right thing in you. There's no more waiting for someone else to do the right thing. Yeah. You know what the right thing is, just do it. Or it will be painful. To your psyche. The star. Ah, hope. <laughs> Who was it? That I spoke about hope with. Five of Wands, a Knight of Pentacles, and Eight of Swords. So we have Eight of Swords, Two of Swords, Nine of Swords. These are not easy cards. Five of Wands adds a bit more struggle to this. Okay, so you come almighty and prepared to a world of chaos. <laughs> and that binds you from doing what you want to do, what you know is right. It's like taking one step forward, ten step backwards. But you still, you know the mission. Star, five of wands, there's love here, there's there's blind faith, there's devotion to a goal, to a purpose. The fool and nine of cups. Aw. Well, this is new. <laughs> so okay. Let's talk about love. <laughs> We go from dealing with big things in your life to things subsiding, which makes room for the emotional frustrations to come through, to recalling how you feel, maybe to someone, realizing that you feel Binded by circumstances to do what you want to do. And then the full cards come comes in and it gives you absolute freedom, an opportunity to just snap out of the imaginary cables and follow the bliss with Nine of Cups and being completely carefree. Sorry if you can hear the noise in the hallway. Apologize. You know what I never do in public? I never talk on the phone with the speakers on when there's people around or when I'm in a place that is not my private space, you know? I find it so invasive to other people's sphere. Like, yeah, I'm at a distance from you physically, but the sounds of my existence infiltrate your serenity. And it feels so rude. 
I don't know why, like what, why can't we talk on the phone or use an ear? I use, I use earpiece. I listen to music or talk on the phone. It's really not that hard. Why do people have such hard time with such basic things of reverence and respect to their fellow humans? Don't understand. <laughs> that was a little, a little bit dramatic. Sorry, guys, but you know, just <laughs> I'm like, it's really not that difficult. Being disrespectful is not cool. It's not a cool thing. I know it. it a lot of people feel really cool about themselves when they're being disrespectful. And I don't, when did disrespect become cool? When did respect become not cool? I'm sorry. Anyway, this ends well this month. It's a wish fulfillment. It's based in something brave that you do that breaks out of the perception of limitations. If you were anxious about something, maybe you're expressing it and then you realize it was never that much of a big deal. Five of Cups. It was at the bottom of the deck, so I guess it really wanted to be out here. I do see a coming and going. I do see a some sort of love relationship where there's someone who's uh, feeling left behind or abandoned by the other. Like there's something very hopeful and surprising and out of the blue that feels amazing, and then suddenly it just leaves. That sucks. <laughs> Sorry, let's let's rearrange the cards, do the existential shift spread, and see what else we can come up with. So I'm going to start with taking the major arcanas that came out. Uh, the world, the hierophant, the emperor, the hermit, and the star. Beautiful. Oh, and the fool, of course, of course. The court cards that we have are the king of wands and knight of pentacles. And two knives. Nine of Swords and Nine of Cups. And two fives. And then two, six, eight. It's less than Okay. Two fives and two nines. There's a conflict here, Leo, in your life that really needs to come to an end. It needs to come to a closure so you could have a new start. Um... It's, it's been lingering for quite some time. You've been trying, I think it's because you were trying to be nice, you were trying to be uh, respectful, or you kept trying to give the other side the benefit of the doubt or another opportunity to do the right thing or to change or to improve. And there was always conversation and advice and patience and acceptance and love and tolerance and allowing the other person to be who they are, but they, it just keeps constantly circling to the same place. It's because it's it's their journey to go through healing. And as long as you do the work for them, it's not gonna, it's not gonna do anything. One moment, I see, I see two people here that one moment fight the world, like they, they're together against the world kind of thing. And then the next they're fighting one another. And it's just, and there's no, I don't see like, loud arguments or something like that i just see someone like as soon as there's a sense of conflict between the two like one just leaves the room or leaves the situation just doesn't want to and, and they, they don't want to experience the conflict but then again if you don't have the conversation if you don't talk things through then you can't really resolve them they, they just stay there uh until the next time mm. Because there is uh, the energy of battle between the two of you, but because you don't want to battle the uh, one another, you find yourself battling the world. But the irony of it, you think that you're, you against the world is some sort of part of the mission, part of your mission. Maybe you think you're in a twin flame thing. It's like part of the mission. It's just how our, what our path is. We're together and we 
confront the world kind of thing. Um, not that there isn't what to confront. I don't think it's, what I'm saying doesn't negate that, but I, it's not the true essence of your coming together. Um, it's your mind that takes you away of the true essence of coming together by, by applying a different form of reason to coming together that is more romantic and more um, magical. Um, but the real reason is that you're here, the two of you are supposed to resolve the battle between the two of you. You're supposed to battle each other. And, and I'm doing this purposefully because I don't mean to actually, God forbid, fight one another, but to confront the issues between the two of you and reach a resolve through dealing with it, through confronting it, you know, having the challenging conversations, etc., cetera, uh, and, not, and not avoiding, evading, denying that it exists no no we're not supposed to be fighting each other we're supposed to save the world because we're twin flames and we're supposed to fight the world no honey i'm sorry it's not it's not it's not personal i don't know you this is just it comes it's coming strongly from the reading you're if you really want to help the world and fulfill your purpose do what your soul needs you to do resolve you know stuff with soulmates that you're here to resolve with, aka this situation, for example, is what I described. Don't give them fancy titles to please your ego. Avoid doing the actual work while telling yourself you're doing the work. Uh, sorry if it's a little harsh, but I'm not your mom. <laughs> sorry, it's, I don't... It, I, and that sounded even more harsh. Uh, I apologize again. Now, the point that I'm trying to make is that's not what you're here for. You're not here for me to soothe and pet your enablings and your deflections and your escapism. That's, that's I, I know it's not what I'm here for. I am here because I want you to experience comfort and joy in life. But that can only happen by transmuting the discomfort and the lack of joy into it by experiencing them and dealing with them. So if I just sit here and be like, oh, you're so perfect. You're on a twin flame journey and you're fighting the world. And every now and then there's a, a chaser and a runner and someone leaves. And if, and if I, and if I yatter that gibberish, I don't know how people manage to distort something that is truly beautiful into something that is so ugly while while disguising it as beautiful it's like so weird uh, that's why i never talk about twin flames because 99 percent of people out there would think they're in a twin flame they're not or maybe they are but they're not even close to experiencing it because they're stuck on something that isn't that and it's so wildly encouraged uh, by a very big amount of creators here online. And you know, I get it. It's, it's that, it's that that versus that, you know, you, you, you want to appeal a demographic and what is trending and what works and what people want to watch because that way you will grow and be able to reach more people. But then but then it negates the point of what it is you, you claim to do this for, unless you don't really care and you're just and you're just saying the things that you know people want to hear because you know it gives you likes. I, I, I want people to subscribe and like my content. Like that's you know, it's not about that. It's just, you know, the way the way I I I, I, I generally still do believe that the way matters. You're not a regular spiritual creators online are not don't have the privilege of doing what regular creators do, which is just figure out what's trending, uh, figure out what people want to hear and then create in accordance and then grow like you're doing something with like it comes with an incredible responsibility to the people who are hearing you are giving spiritual counseling. Like, I need you to understand what that means. Like, I need you to understand the, um, the responsibility that you have as soon as you claim yourself to do so and then put yourself out there, present yourself in doing so. It's not 
of course it can and even should be fun and entertaining and you know appealing but the essence of the things you say you can't The thing about it is it comes with a way heavier price, karma-wise. You know, claiming to help people, but actually keeping them stuck. Claiming to spread truth and knowledge while actually not. Even the opposite. It's, it's like the opposite of the direction that Source has taken us to. And by doing so, you're contributing, directly contributing to the devolve. Uh, escalation of the human spirit and the human psyche. And I know you don't want to do that, so, so why do you? And then you're going you're gonna to be like, to grow my channel, to have likes, to have subscribers. You know, that's the equivalent to the metaphor of selling your soul to the devil. I'm not saying that there's a devil that you're signing an agreement with and selling your soul to. No. But that's the equivalent in essence. Right? I'm so, 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 so much for your prosperity and your success and your growth and your achievements and your... And, and for you to shine bright, so bright, but it needs to be shining bright through your light. Not by dimming, dimming other people's light. You know, if you dim someone else's light by all the things that I just said, then vicariously that's what you do. When you keep someone circulating online, day in, day out, watching this content that keeps them stuck, you dim their light, you, you dim their choice, you dim their power, you, you take it away from them, you take away from their, you know, from, from them knowing that they, deserve, that they deserve something so much better and so much more loving, so much more respect, respectful. So if you shine because, in, because it's in comparison to others who, who get their light dimmed because of your work, you're not shining, my friend. I'm saying this because I actually want you to shine. And then I, I, I do believe that even if it might take longer and harder, that you will eventually succeed and prosper and expand um, and receive the recognition based on following your, the truth, you know, and, and actually helping people. Now, not, not if you're watching this and you're like, well, you know, I'm not saying that you're necessarily a spiritual teacher. This was just a rant for those of you who are um, and that do do that. If, you know, uh, not necessarily because I did tap into a lot of mighty wheels, right? So, but for those who might need, might need it to hear this, um, I hope you hear me. You will get there. If, if the path is longer because you're true, honorable, then it will be all the more worth it. You know, and I know it's hard. <laughs> it's so tempting. Just... Yeah. Okay, so if you're in this type of dynamic, just confront it, deal with it, talk to the person. Um, if you're not, recognize the dynamic if it happens. Want to study tarot and other VIP good yummies? Please visit my Patreon and thank you from the bottom of my heart to all my patrons, all my channel members here on YouTube as well, and all my subscribers, every single one of you. Thank you for uh, participating in whatever form you see fit. Appreciate it. Namaste. And I'll see you soon. Bye.